Welcome back. I'm glad you've been staying with us now. We're at the beginning of the analyze phase of DMAIC, Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, and Control. What we've done so far is we've talked about the define phase, which is where we understand what is the nature of the problem that we're trying to attack, and we go through the administrative process of starting a project. In the measure phase, we start understanding the physical effects and the, the images of the process and how it's actually working, as well as what the performance measures tell us about that process. We also understand in the measure phase we, how well our measurement system is working, and we get a baseline for performance to make sure that when we come to the end of the project, we've actually made improvement. Now in the analyze phase, we're going to take a look at a different perspective. Instead of looking at the physical process, we're going to focus on the numerical facts about what we know um, contributors to variation in the process. Remember, we talked about in exploratory data analysis the ideas of Bob and Wow, best of the best, worst of the worst. Two different rational subgroups that define where we see the best day's performance compared to the worst day's performance for a particular process output variable. We called that process output variable Y. And now what we want to do is we're going to decompose the Y into different X measures of process performance. So the analyze phase is going to determine which of these process factors contribute the most variation to the outcome of this core problem that we're trying to understand. It begins by making this performance baseline from the measure phase, and it's going to end with a working hypothesis about causation and the root cause. A number of questions we're going to ask. Which factors affect variation the most? Where does the process waste time? Where does it cost too much? How much variation can we actually explain by these process details? How much variation can we explain? What are the potential root causes that could be considered in the next phase for improve? Are there any missing variables that we need to consider and look for more X's because we don't have a full description of the process? And finally, we'll end up with how do we actually describe a potential process experiment that could demonstrate causation and allow us to understand the things that we need to do to actually solve the problem. We're going to use a number of methods in this process. Some of them we've talked about before, like the y, five whys problem analysis and the five whys with data. We'll introduce process cycle time analysis and look at it in more depth, along with hypothesis testing, multivariate analysis. Analysis of variance will also see some of the reasons on how it works and we'll understand regression analysis and the fitted line plot. We'll also look at residuals analysis, what's left over after we've created a statistical model of the process. This is the variation that can't be explained. And finally, we'll take a look at process transaction costs. What is the cost that is happening to this process so we can identify waste much more specifically? Now, we start with this process, we're beginning with the Y, the output variables. And we want to understand within that Y performance measure of the results or the outcomes, what are the different rational subgroups, the things that we can clearly identify that may change as a result of the way this process is performing. We also need to determine what's the time frame in which we observe that difference, because we want to take a look at data just from that sample out of the population when we're evaluating Bob and Wow. We then want to investigate what are the X factors that create this observed difference in the outcome or the productivity measure. And then we'll link the measures that we have of the output to the process variables. These are the X's. And what we'll have then done is formulated this equation, Y is a function of X. There's a saying in Six Sigma, we don't know what we don't know. And this talks about really the attitude that we should take when we're going into understanding the process. We need to be open, not having any preconceived ideas about what the causes are. And so we should have a naive mindset, understanding that we should be skeptical, skeptical about everybody's theory opinion or theory O about what we think there is. We'll test those theories with scientific-based hypothesis testing. Now, we have to understand a lot of factors to do this. And so what we see is we're going to be searching for variation. Is it within these subgroups or between the subgroups? And the very location of the variation will tell us a lot about what's happening in the process. For instance, if it's within the subgroup, we are then seeing a, a set of variation which should be short-term, 
pretty much homogeneous. For instance, we look at one piece of equipment. It would vary relatively consistently to itself. But if there's a second piece of equipment doing the same thing, it will vary also with respect to itself. But the two pieces may vary differently. And we call that between variation. So within variation, the average of this across all the rational subgroups that are common is what we call common cause variation. This is symptomatics of problems in the design of that particular type of subgroup. When we take a look at the difference between the subgroups, we call this special cause variation. It's due to specific actions, and it gives us some idea about things that are happening that have been unique. Maybe it was an operator that hasn't been trained, or a tool that's somewhat worn out and needs to be replaced. And so there's something specific within that subgroup that creates a difference between it and another one that's performing better. And so these are things we would like to be able to observe. When we look at the variation, we see there are three different types of variation. It could be positional within a unit of production. So if we're making semiconductor wafers, for instance, we might see chips in the center are better quality than chips on the edge. Or if we're taking a look at features of a software problem, a program, we might see some subroutines that are just administrative, which run very quickly, and some are arithmetic and they take longer periods of time. Maybe we see difference operator to operator because of people's difference in training, or machine to machine based on the way the equipment has been configured. Or maybe it's the testing cycles that we see that are different because each operator is doing a different type of test and we've lost consistency in the review process. Those are all positional types of things that we can find out by looking at the rational subgroups themselves. But we may see some on the time sequence. So there are two types of time sequences. One is cyclical, so a batch to batch difference. If I make one batch of wafers, then there's something different in the next batch of wafers. And so we might see that that difference might be affected by environmental conditions or the setup. Or maybe it's between consecutive pieces or transactions. So if we're getting lots of purchase orders coming into the organization, each time we do a setup for a new customer, maybe it takes a different time. And so we see that there's some difference in setup time, customer to customer. We call those types of things cyclical. So it's between sequential products or transactions. The other type of temporal is temporals that happen actually in the time domain. Shift to shift. There's a difference in performance between shift one and shift two. Or maybe there's a difference in terms of day of the week. Or maybe it's different in terms of seasons. So we have a selling season and we have a season that we have relatively poor sales. So those are then differences that we can identify as a function of time. Now we start combining these things together, we see that the picture of a process is actually gets to be rather complex. We talked about we want to formulate a, an equation, y is a function of x. But now we see there's also another term we're going to add to that, and that is a function of some error term, which can be explained perhaps by the statistical model. So we'll see we want to understand what is within the model and what's outside of the model. Because the things that are in the model are the x's that we can identify. The things outside the model, we have to be a little bit careful about because they may cause this model not to give us a good answer. So we look at the process measures. We see there are different ways we can combine the measures. Most of you have been taught to analyze a problem one factor at a time, and so we hold everything else constant. In the real world, it doesn't work that way. Multiple factors move together at the same time. So I may have three what we call main effects. So one of those may be time, another may be product type, and a third one might be a physical uh, characteristic like viscosity. And what we see is all three of them are moving at once. And so we can study the main effect, what happens to the output variable y as a changes, or as b changes, or as c changes. But we also see there are times when a and b change together, B and C change together, and A and C change together, and sometimes, more rarely, all three of them change at once. And so we have to understand what happens with each of those possible combinations of changes in the magnitude of the process. This creates a multiple variable problem, and it moves us out of single variable statistics. The final thing is we also have the error term. This could be due to measurement error. It could be due to operator error. We talked about these in terms of gauge R and R in our measure phase. But it may also be in terms of we have the wrong statistical model. We're trying to fit a linear model, and it's quadratic or cubic. 
And so we also see that would be a lack of fit type system where the model we chose for analysis was using the wrong equation. So as we look at these things, we see all of these are considerations we're going to make in this analyze phase. Now I think you've got the idea. This is much more complex statistically than our first process step for measure. We're also going to see, though, that we don't get rid of the lean considerations here. The lean and the statistical will be blended together. Because what we're looking for is the objective in this DMAIC analyze phase is to find factors that drive loss in the process, that drive waste in the process, and those things that create cost. And that's what holds back the productivity in terms of the outcome of process steps. So, we're going to go on this journey together. And remember, we don't know what we don't know. And so what we want to do is start the journey to find out what we can know and then create a system that tells us what we can do about it.